Hi, I'm Elliot, and welcome to this video tutorial from Decast. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the XSplit broadcasting software. We split this video into two parts. Part one will be an introduction to some of its features and how to use them, while part two will be about how to use XSplit to connect to your server and broadcast your live stream. So I've just opened XSplit, and the first thing I'm going to need is a video source. So we're going to go up here to add source. There's a couple of options, but I'm going to go straight to webcam and I'm going to pick my web camera. And there I am. Hello. Uh, one of the really nice things about XSplit is that it's seamless and really simple to use. So I can just click the video feed from my web camera here and I can just drag myself around the screen and I can resize it like that. And you'll see that we've got this black bar here on the right side. That's because by default, XSplit is in widescreen or an aspect ratio of 16 to 9, whereas the web camera is square and has an aspect ratio of 4 to 3. So if I want to change that, I go to View, I go to Resolution, and I just select a 4 to 3 ratio here. And you'll see it creates these black bars in my video. So we just got to go down to Scene Sources, delete the webcam, go to Add, Web Camera, select my web camera, and now it's here without the black bars in 4.3, and it can fill the whole screen. So what XSplit also has are lots of multiple scenes that we can easily switch between. And I'm going to show you how we can create a scene with multiple different layers in it, because that's really nice and simple to do in XSplit. So we're going to create a new scene. We're going to go to scene two. I'm going to go add web camera, select my web camera, and I'm going to put myself in the corner down here. And you'll see when I drag it around that it kind of snaps to the bottom corner. You can turn this option off if you want, but by default, XSplit has a lot of snapping that we can use. And now I'm going to add a still image to fill in this large black space over here. So we're going to go to add media file, and we're going to select this man with the pink camera. And we're going to plop that down and resize that until it fills the screen. But you can see that now I'm completely covered. So if we go down to scene sources and we select the web camera, we can just drag it on top. And now I'm the top layer again. XSplit also comes with um, a fade transition by default. So if I go to scene one now, you'll see it fades from one to the other. I can click uh, on the scene I want to change to down here, or I can use Alt number. So Alt 2, Alt 1, Alt 2, Alt 1. If I want to change the transition, I can go to View, Scene Transition, and I've got a couple of different options. And I'm going to select Clock, because that has a nice effect. So now when I go to Scene 2, we get this clockwise wipe. If I want to, I can change the speed by going to scene, transition, transition speed. And we'll just slow that down to 900. So now when I go to scene one, you can see a little preview when I hover over it. And then when I click it, the transition happens. So another feature I like about XSplit is the ability for it to detect what is different and what is the same in different scenes. So we're going to go to scene two now, and we're going to create another scene like this with me in the corner and an image taken up the background. So we want the our constant source to be identically the same size, like exactly the same size. So I'm going to copy it by going control C. We're going to go to scene three. I'm going to control V to paste it. Now we're going to go to Add Source, Media Image, or Media File. And we're going to take a picture of the Teradek Video in Pro encoder that we recently gave away. And again, we're going to drag myself to be the top layer. Now what you'll see happen is when we transition from scene 3 to scene 2, only the background changes. Because my video feed is the same source and it's the same size, it doesn't change at all, which means that 
it's really easy in XSplit to set up a situation where we want one source, such as me talking to the camera, to be a constant, but I can refer to different subjects and different scenes behind me. And you can see that we have quite a few scenes we can add if we want to. Okay, now I'm going to show you uh, some of the other options you have for sources. So we're going to go down to scene four, where I've already put myself in the bottom left corner. And we're going to add source, and we're going to go to down to other. And there's a couple of different options here, such as chat viewers for Hitbox and Twitch, as well as, uh, I'll point out, there is a game capture, because um, XSplit is marketed towards video game streaming uh, is its angle, that's where it's marketed towards. But I'm going to go down to other, and I'm going to go to web page URL. And I'm going to type in www.dacast.com. So this creates a source of a live uh, feed of a website. I'm just going to put myself on top again, and I can scroll down here, I can interact with it, I can use this as if I had the browser open, which is a really, really cool little feature. Um, possible uses for it are having a document that you want to live stream that you're talking about, or going over a text to a class. You can use other live video sources and you can use uh, YouTube videos, but it's not the best at playing them, I found. So have a little experiment, but don't expect it to handle live video extremely well. And if I want to, I don't have to delete the scene. I can just untick it and it disappears. I'm going to show you my other favorite source that we have down here, and it's called the whiteboard. And the whiteboard's kind of cool. I'm not going to right click to read the instructions. Actually, I am because I want to change the color. There we go. So if I right click on here, we get our instructions and we can choose the color. And then we left click and I can start drawing on the screen. Sometimes it's not happy with lines. You've really got to click, let go, and click. Uh, I think if you're moving when you let go, it doesn't record it. Uh, and I can press S to change the brush size. We can make a slightly grumpy looking man because we've got this line here. He's not quite sure about his day. And I can also, if I hold Shift, it will automatically straighten out shapes for me. Let's see if I can do a circle. Yay, we did a circle. Um, so this obviously has some applications if you want to use it in a classroom environment where you can uh, draw things and uh, draw messages, uh, illustrate what it is you're talking about. I can also use escape to clear it. And if I want, I can bring myself to the top so I can select me, make me larger, center me, put the whiteboard back on top. And now I can draw on me. So I'll give myself a mustache and some glasses. I am not the best artist in the world. Give me some devil horns. So I was being a bit silly there, but you can obviously see the applications this has, you know, especially for sports broadcasting. Uh, the whiteboard is quite a nice little feature that's there by default in XSplit. Great, so the last thing I want to show you is layering multiple sources together uh, with an overlay, because if we have something that has a transparent uh, background to it, we can do that quite easily. So I'm going to delete these. I'm going to make me smaller. I'm going to go to add source, media file. I'm going to use this overlay I've already made. I'm going to drag it until it fills the screen. And you can see now I'm here in a nice little box. We have the Duck House branding at the top. This is the XSplit tutorial. And I can also add another source to fill in our large space on the right here. So that's on the top layer. I'm just going to make it bigger and then drag it below our tutorial overlay. So our overlay option is this one here. And so now I've got two different sources, two different versions of me. Obviously, if I had two cameras, uh, I could have two different video feeds. I could be talking about uh, a sports match or a broadcast of a music venue, the news, any kind of content you wanted to create. And down here, I've got a constant version of myself talking to the camera. I can select all of these. 
and copy them. I'm going to go to scene free. We're going to delete this one, this video of me. I'm going to go paste the whole overlay in here. I'm going to get rid of the second camera. And this is the terror deck. So we're just going to bring that across and then bring the overlay on top again. And now, just like before, um, XSplit is able to detect what is the same and what is different. So if I go scene four, only the source, which is different, changes. And I can swap between the two. So again, I can swap between multiple sources, images, video feeds, but have a constant overlay and constant uh, camera looking at me uh, for whatever content I'm broadcasting. And final little thing I'll show you is that we can add text to our broadcast. So we can go, thank you for watching. And we can make that scrolling from right to left. And there we are. We'll uh, box this in under XSplit tutorial here, make it a bit smaller. There we go. So that was a very brief, simple introduction on some of the features of XSplit. If you're interested in how I made this very simple overlay, we'll be doing a video on that as well. And you can find the link uh, below wherever this video is being posted. Um, XSplit does have a free trial. Um, it limits you to four sources, has an XSplit watermark over the video, and doesn't let you change audio. It doesn't allow you to do stereo in the free version, only mono sound. However, um, it's relatively inexpensive because you can purchase it on a month by month or yearly basis. So there's, for the personal one is $40 a year and the premium version with, which has extra features is $60 a year. You can buy a one-off license like you would for Wirecast and that is around the same price, like around $450 to $500 for a one-off license uh, for the whole thing. So I hope you've found this video a little bit useful and it's made some sense of XSplit. In the next video, we'll be looking at how to um, actually broadcast with XSplit. Thank you very much for watching.